This is the Sidewinder. For me, this is the real top 1% of all ships. We've all been there, with some of us revisiting it later in our elite careers. This, on the other hand, is the Beluga. This is the ship where the owner will repeatedly tell people that it's in the top 1% of all liners, and that's a pretty bold claim. I'm not sure it's entirely accurate either, for a start, if I drove the best car in the world I wouldn't need to stick my head out of the sunroof with a megaphone to announce it to everyone on the road. If I did that I'd probably be seen as a bit of a burk. Visually, this is unmistakably a South Kruger ship running a similar design language to both the Dolphin and Orca, but unlike the other two, thanks to its bulbous front end, it looks like a, an enormous phallus. I could sit here and rip on it with plenty of innuendo, but I think both Yamix and the pilot have pretty much got that ground covered. But it is hard. So hard not to. And also apparently its somewhat unique looks are enough to distract guards, giving you an opportunity to slip in the back door and loot all their materials from ground bases. The Beluga is absolutely huge. It's bigger than the Imperial Cutter and it's bigger than the Type 9 Transporter. You can get 14 Sidewinders nose to tail in the same space as the length of one Beluga. I'm not sure what you'd do with 14 Sidewinders, aside from a better job in combat than the Beluga, but there you go. The Beluga is so large in fact that it's almost a meme at this point of pilots getting it stuck in the access port, then getting destroyed by station defences, leaving their cargo ripe for collection. Inside, the cockpit is spacious, with room to bring three friends along. Decked out with the standard South Kruger purple on the wall and looking every bit as sterile as the cockpits on the Beluga sister ships. For a luxury liner, you'd expect it to have a little more... extra. And whilst I'm assuming that the passenger areas have sculptures, gardens, swanky restaurants and seminars on how best to screw over the peasants in order to make the most profit, the cockpit isn't really anything special aside from being freaking huge. That aside though, this might be the biggest liner that South Kruger have currently made commercially available to the masses, but I don't think it's the best. Once you've bought the standard ship, you'll have a liner that'll overheat because you've simply thought about jumping to another system and the heat issues don't actually get much better once you've outfitted it with decent components. Which is almost odd given how good a job the Dolphin does at regulating its heat and that's a ship designed by the same manufacturer. In fact the only ship that comes to mind with heat regulation this bad is the Type 7 and I could rag on that all day long but I've done enough of that recently in the Type 8 video. So it's a large ship, in fact it's one of the largest ships that you can pilot yourself. You'd think that this means it would have an internal capacity bigger than everything else, given that you'd have to equip those luxury cabins and have room for passengers and their entourage of servants and outfits, but you'd be wrong. This is a large ship with an enormous frame, so you'd expect the ship to have a better cargo capacity than any medium ship, right? Still wrong. The Type 8 can transport more goods while still being able to fit on a medium pad, and that's coming in at less than half the cost. Yes, you can get decent passenger capacity with the Beluga, but you can fit more passengers onto other ships, including the Anaconda. Simply put, the one job that this ship is meant to excel at still has it being beaten by other cheaper ships, and unless you want to give the passengers the full experience with luxury cabins, there's plenty of other options out there. Speaking of passengers, even without the luxury cabins, the passengers are incessantly needy asking you to pick up stuff en route for a pittance. I wouldn't mind, but when they're described as rich tourists and offer you a token sum of credits to go out of your way on what would otherwise be a two minute single hop trip, then frankly they can, well, they can shove the front end of the beluga where the sun doesn't shine. And if the passengers are this bad in what can only be described as scum class, God knows how bad they'd be if they're in the top 1% of cabins on what is supposedly the top 1% of liners. Hell, they're probably the sort of people who throw their litter straight on the floor expecting some lowly servant to clean up after them. Given that this ship is designed to take passengers out long distances on tourist trips, you can take it out exploring. You can get about 60 light years per jump from what I can tell, but that's without adding the passenger cabins and carrying the absolute minimum while being heavily engineered. 
so if you're planning on taking this for a joyride out into the black, I'd be inclined to leave the passengers for another pilot to pick up. Really though, if I wanted a South Kruger ship for exploration, I'd pick up another Orca or I'd retrofit my existing one. The Orca has better range, it's got room for all of the exploration toys you might want except for a fighter, and really you'd only want a fighter if you wanted something a little bit more disposable for some canyon running while out there in a far off system. If you're thinking this might be a good option for combat, there are 5 medium hardpoints, but the weapon placement isn't great. I'm surprised that the rear frag cannons haven't clipped the back of the ship, given how far back they are. Although you can add a fighter bay to give it a little bit of flexibility, and while the Beluga is surprisingly manoeuvrable for its size, you are still flying an absolutely massive ship that has a pretty rough amount of drift to contend with, meaning that a blind pilot can hit you at 3 kilometers without much issue. If your hard points aren't enough, then sometimes it's better to ask the other ship if they want to smash. I, I mean by that that the Beluga is more than up to the task of ramming other ships into a cloud of debris. But to do that, you're going to want to bring all of the relevant armour upgrades and bolster your underspec shields as far as you can, otherwise it can get expensive. Remember, it's always best to have protection. If you wanted another use for those hard points, you could consider mining. Five mediums is enough to bring all of the mining toys that you might need, but at the same point, if you were taking the Beluga, you'd be doing it mostly to flaunt your wealth, and instead it's probably better saving up for the Imperial Cutter, that way you have wealth and vastly more capacity to show off. And if you don't want to show off any wealth, then I can't see any reason not to use a Type 9 or even a Type 8 for that matter. I did do a little bit of material gathering in the Belugas, I've been running low on a few manufactured materials lately and whilst it's fine for this sort of job if you have Olympic controller attached, I get much more enjoyment out of using my ASP scouts and picking up the materials manually. In fact I'll go as far as to say in recent weeks I've been enjoying the ASP scout far more than the Beluga. So looking at this ship, this gargantuan cylinder of composite, glass and metal. It's got an almost unique styling if you're into that sort of thing, and if you can enjoy it or look past it, ultimately it's still not a good ship. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's an outright bad ship. It doesn't have the pluck of the Sidewinder, the real top 1% of all ships. It doesn't have the brutality of the Corvette or the transport capability of the Type 9. Instead, it's just an oversized and underspecked Orca made to make the rich feel richer while the poor mock them behind closed doors for their poor choice. And on that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care, much love, and 07. Thank you.